One of the most exciting and frustrating things about taking a DNA test is trying to figure out how you're related to the other people who've taken a DNA test. Testing company 23andMe has a tool called the Family Tree that tries to help you put all those relationships together. And they're doing it really well in some areas and not so well in other areas. So let's talk about that in our five minutes with your DNA with me, Diane Southard. If you want to access this cool family tree tool at 23andMe, there's a couple of different ways you can get there depending on which menu you choose. So you could always take the top menu route and click on family and friends and then click on family tree. But it's also in the quick menu under family tree. When you get there, essentially what you're going to see is this branching, kind of resembling a family tree looking image. Now I really like images, I really like graphics, I really like the way we can talk about data with pictures, and so immediately I'm drawn to this kind of tool. But there's a couple of things you need to overcome if you're a genealogist. The first thing is that when you're a genealogist and you're looking at information like this, then we tend to think of this like our family tree, just like you would any other image of a family tree. So there's me and there's my dad, and then up here we have his parents, right? But if you're a genealogist, then you automatically assume that his dad is on the left and his mom is on the right. That's not the way it is with this tree. This is a genetic tree that's essentially just showing you the relationships between you and different DNA matches. So we have to think of it more broadly than we would our traditional family tree. One of the biggest concepts that's important to understand before you really dive into what this tree is trying to tell you is this idea of a most recent common ancestor. We say MRCA for short. Your MRCA is just the ancestral couple that you share in common most recently with someone else. So if you're talking to your sister, your MRCA is your parents. It's the couple that the two of you share most recently. If you're talking to your first cousin, your MRCA is your grandparents. That's the couple that you share most recently. So this tree at 23andMe is just a series of MRCAs. It's showing you the most recent common ancestors ancestor between you and a particular DNA match just based on the genetic information without any genealogy information at all. So if we're looking at the MRCAs in my chart, you can see that each of these couples is, is defined by my, my pink boxes. Those are my MRCAs. And for me, because I've done family history, I know who these people are. I know who these MRCAs are. So that now let's say I wanted to figure out how I was related to a particular DNA match, somebody that I had never heard of before. Let's say that DNA match is named Roy, as you see here. Even without knowing anything else about Roy, I can see his MRCA, the couple that 23andMe believes connects Roy and I together. Now on its own, this might not mean very much, but when you combine it with other information I already know, we can actually learn an exciting amount of information about Roy, even if he's never contacted us, even if we don't know anything else. So if we look at my known matches in this group, I know who April and Jake are. April and Jake are my second cousins, which means I know our MRCA. In fact, if you look here on the chart, I know that their grandfather is my grandmother's brother which means that our MRCA, our most recent common ancestor couple, is Joseph Butterfield and Lucy Clanch. So this is information I know just because I know these cousins, April and Jake. We used to live right around the corner from each other. We catch the bus together in the morning when we were kids. So that helps me understand something about Roy, who I don't know anything about. You can see that Roy is drawn in the same situation as, as Jake and April on the same side of my family tree. So I already know a lot about Roy without really having him tell me anything about him. So we can learn even one step more. We don't just know that he's related on this side of the family. We know that his MRCA is either the parents of Joseph Butterfield or the parents of Lucy Clanch. Do you see how looking at the MRCAs that I know, looking at his relationships to the people that I know, have now taken me from, I have no idea who Roy is, to, hmm, 
Roy has to be related to me through one of two ancestral couples that I can identify. So that's pretty powerful, and that's what makes this tool so exciting. This tool doesn't have any genealogy input at all, which means that there are millions of people who can participate in this tool, even if they've never looked up a document in their lives. It's a tool that helps people recognize the relationships between people and how interconnected that we all are. And that's all an exciting part of how we want genetic genealogy to grow. We want to involve more people in understanding about their connections. Now, as I said, these connections aren't always correct, so you have to be really careful how you're using them. And 23andMe has provided you some ways to interact with their system to help them better represent your relationships. So for example, if I click on Roy, and then I click on see other possible relationships, then it's going to pull up this table, and it's gonna show me, okay, we've drawn Roy in this part of your pedigree chart, he doesn't have to go there. He could go in one of these other slots. So they're telling you these are all of the other relationships that are genetically possible based on the amount of DNA that you share with Roy. You can also click on that More Actions toolbar right here, and that's going to bring up the ability to affect the way your tree is drawn. This allows you to move Roy around in your tree so you can place him in a, in a spot where he does actually belong. So it, it allows you also to name your ancestors, to put names on those MRCAs if you want to. So it's kind of a partnership between you and 23andMe to try to help you work together to make this tool work to help you identify your relationship to some of your unknown matches. Now this tool has already gone through one update and unfortunately for me, uh, the initial uh, rearrangement of the tree was better than this new one. And so I know that their system has some problems and I've heard from a lot of people, oh, they're drawing it wrong this way, how do I change it? You just need to go in and use these tools that they've provided to drag people around until they um, come into that arrangement that you, that you know is correct for those people that you know. So when I do that, you can see here, Roy's been drawn up a totally different line and I actually was able to figure out my relationship to Roy largely because of this initial tree, but now they've done it wrong. And so I need to move Roy around. I need to reposition him on the tree. But 23andMe allows me to do that, which is great. So I also wanted to show you that it depends a lot on who tests what kind of tree they have. So I've been showing you this whole time my tree, but honestly, I never work with my own DNA results when I'm trying to do family history because I'm genetically irrelevant. Uh, my parents have both tested, which means their DNA is far more valuable than mine because they have 100% of their DNA and I only have half. So when I look at my dad's tree, this is what his tree in that same section looks like. So while I have like five DNA matches drawn into my tree, he has like 25. And that, that really helps you understand how important it is to test the older generation. Testing someone on a generation above you will give you so much better access to information like this that will help you recreate and redraw your family tree to include all of these new cousins that you're finding. So as always, whenever you're watching any learning video, it's imperative that as soon as you're done, you go and do. You've got to practice these things for yourself. So here's your homework. I want you to be patient with this tool because it is a work in progress. Uh, accept its limitations. It's not going to be right every time, but it will be right some of the time. And then focus on your known matches to help you reorganize the unknown matches. That's really the key, is understanding your known matches and how they connect to you so you can see what kinds of hints the tree is trying to give you about your unknown matches. And of course, click on everything, every time. Just, you can't ruin it, just click on everything. But be careful with this tool, just a word of warning. So far, I can't find an undo button, so do be a little bit careful about what you're doing because it's a little bit harder to undo it. So I'm interested to see what you think of the tree. How is it working for you? Uh, what, what methods are you using to double check? Um, are you having success? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you. And until next time, this is Diane Southard, your DNA guide.